Bienvenue to Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. Since the start of the conflict in Ukraine, many Muslims have been involved in the war effort, forming several battalions on the front line, ordinary people helping them get ready. If the majority of these women and men are Ukrainian, there are also a groundswell of Muslims coming from the Caucasus, among them Chechens. On the 18th of October, the Kyiv parliament recognized the independence of the Chechen Republic of Ichkeria and its occupation by Russia. Together, Muslims have faced up to their common enemy, Russia, while defending the values of Ukraine. Our reporter, Raid Abu Zadeh, who made this report, joins us now. Raid, some consider it a jihad in the truest sense uh, of the word uh, inside a country which is majority Christian. Yes, uh, Mark, nobody in Ukraine call, call it jihad, but they, they consider themselves in a jihad because they are fighting for their country, they are defending their houses and they are defending their family. We met the Mufti who, who said we can't call it for a jihad because Ukraine, Ukraine is a secular country and the Mufti doesn't have the authority to call for a jihad. Raid, thank you very much, Adil. Let's take a look then at the report by Anais Gerard, Raid Abu Zadeh, who went to meet these Muslims united in the fight for Ukraine's survival. An ambulance on its way back from the front. On board, a soldier with a bullet in his abdomen. You OK? It's fine. Hang on, we'll be there in 10 minutes. The war has turned Saeed Ismailov into a first aid volunteer. Since the 1st of December, we've been evacuating the wounded every day. At the moment, there's street fighting, so we're getting a lot of bullet wounds. This is as far as we're allowed to go. The hospital's location is a secret. Next stop, the Konstantinovka Mosque. Twenty-six kilometers from the front line, the sound of shell fire never stops. Dressed in military fatigues, the Imam and former Mufti leads the Friday prayers. In conditions of war, the religious texts take on a particular resonance. The Imam urges his congregation to defend the country. I'm convinced this is a jihad because, according to Sharia law, we have the right to defend our lives, families and property. But I'm calling for the defense of Ukraine, not for jihad, because Ukraine is a secular country. Ukraine is mostly Christian, but there are half a million Muslims, around 1% of the population. Many have joined the armed forces since the Russian invasion, like Mohammed Ali. There was a battle here on February 27th when a small group of Russians got into town. His hometown went up in smoke. We saw everything with our own eyes. The school was burning, and we could smell the bodies consumed by fire. It was like nothing I've ever experienced before. It was a turning point for Mohammed. He joined those in the Kharkiv Muslim community who've decided to fight. You're right on time for the food, brother. Let's eat. And it's there he met Haj Murad, a voluntary chaplain in the army. As you know, our men are dying. Young men are going to war, and we bury many of them without being able to identify their bodies. Can we forgive that? Absolutely not. 
This is something new for a Muslim community used to keeping to itself. Before, the political system followed Russian propaganda. Muslims were accused of being terrorists. But now society has become more mature. We're accepted for what we are, and that allows us to be more active. At the Islamic Cultural Center, everyone plays a part in the war effort. After work, Natalia Mansour makes candles for the soldiers in the trenches. It's to help them keep warm, make food, and give them a bit of comfort. It's a way of saying they're not forgotten. We want to help them, because this affects all of us. Natalia learned how to make them on YouTube. In these dark times, being able to contribute in this way gives her some hope. How do I feel? My heart is filled with joy. I'm proud to be able to do something, however small. The next day, the candles and other supplies are loaded up by Muhammad Ali and Haj Murad. The two friends are off to supply the soldiers at the front. Destination Bakhmut. In war, everything can change in an instant, which is why we always have a plan. But God alone knows what will happen. We approach a town under constant attack by the Russians. To reach the Ukrainian positions, we have to take this dirt track. But just as we're entering the town, our car hits a concrete block. I've broken the wheel. Have you got a cable? Pull it there, take it a bit closer. We're stuck between two artillery positions. We have to get the journalists out. The press can't stay here. To be safe, Haj Murad quickly decides to hitch a ride with these men from the Chechen battalion. Let's go, let's go. We move deeper into the depths of a town under siege. Bakhmut is a ghost town. That wasn't far away. Sheltering in the basement, Haj Murad, the chaplain, gathers news from the front. Yesterday, we learned that the Russian invaders were close to Bakhmut. But our brothers have just told us that they've pushed them back. Our resistance fills us with joy. The chaplain's presence is a source of valued support for the soldiers. Thank God, our brother comes to see us regularly. He helps raise our morale. We're happy to see him. Together, we're going to win. Ukrainians and Chechens are fighting side by side against their common enemy, Russia. Muslim Cherpoloisky is the commander-in-chief of the Chechen Sheikh Mansur battalion. He's been fighting in the Donbass since 2015. The Russians have forced this war on us. 
That's why we have to fight them and survive using every possible means. Most of the time we use guerrilla tactics because we don't have enough military equipment to go face to face with them on equal terms. We don't have aircraft, tanks, artillery or rocket launchers. As we prepare to leave, Nureddin makes sure there are no snipers waiting outside. His fight against the Russians began in Chechnya when he was just 14. I'll never forgive the Russians for what they have done in my country. Never. I'll fight against his regime until I die, or until it is destroyed. I think that Europe and the entire world have now understood who the real terrorists are. More than 700 kilometers away in Kiev, Maga, another Chechen, is also fighting the Russians. After studying in France, he joined the Jokhar Dudayev Battalion. A specialist in military intelligence, he keeps his face hidden while we speak. What you see there is a heavy machine gun. We captured it from the Russian Cetizium. There were a lot of abandoned tanks. War trophies that make it possible for MAGA and his battalion to support the army. Ukraine seems ready to fight to the end. So we're going to stay with it until victory. Look, this is the symbol of the Ukrainian Tatars and the Chechens and our struggle to defend Ukraine together and destroy the Reds' terror. The Tatars come from Crimea. Converted to Islam in the 14th century, today they're the largest Muslim community in Ukraine. They too have Putin in their sights. Uh, all of these books are for the libraries on the occupied territories because a lot of libraries were destroyed in these occupied territories. Ali Maliev is the deputy director of the Tatar Cultural Institute of Ukraine. He's seeking to preserve the identity of his people. In, in the beginning of 2014, Russia tried to give us money, some benefits, etc., etc., etc. But almost all Crimean Tatars said, "No, we we have." One, motherland is Ukraine, and our land is Crimea. If we're trying to sacrifice Crimea and to uh, present Crimea for Russia, it means that this war will be the war of our next generations. Today, Alim and the Tatar community are burying one of their soldiers. Seyran Kadyrov died in Bakhmut. In this war died one more Crimean Tatar, one more Muslim, one more Ukrainian, one more uh, brave uh, human of this land who struggled for this land. For the fighters of the Crimean battalion, only Ukraine's victory can restore the dignity of the deceased. It's very difficult to express everything I feel. For most of us here, he was a brother. I don't even have the words to tell you how close we were. It's a very heavy loss for all of us. And we will take our revenge. This is the price of war the tears and the blood that has been shed. In this Christian cemetery, a new plot has been set aside for Muslims. The body of the soldier is buried in the earth for which he gave his life. Our reporter Raid Abuzad is still with us. Raid, we saw in the report uh, just how units from Chechnya fight against Russia. What
is their motivation. The first motivation is the common enemy, as you said, the Russia still a common enemy. The second, the parliament, the Rada Ukrainian, as you said before, they voted a uh, resolution recognize uh, Chechen as an occupied territory by Russia. But the third, which is the most important motivation, Ukrainian in the past fought with Chechen in the two wars. The name of the guy is Alexander, Alexander Mosaiko, his name by the Chechen fighter is the brother, who's the, was the only one called brother, and we used to call him in, in Grozny, the Christian brother. That's, that's why uh, Chechen consider themselves paying back a debt to Ukraine. Indeed, there is a history there, right, isn't there? What about the Tatars? Um, why have they chosen Ukraine as their country? Tatar is a different story, different, old and painful. 1944, they, were, they have been deported by the Union, Soviet Union to somewhere in uh, Central Asia, to Sib Siberia, more than a quarter of a million uh, has been deported from, uh, from Crimea. 46% uh, died in this deportation of between the May 18th, 44 and the beginning of, of, of June. But they now have a different story from the 2040. They don't want to be a Russian. They don't want to be under Russian authority. We met a lot of them. There's a different message. We met Isaac Aif, uh, the leader of a crime battalion. We met Tamila Tasheva, Tasheva, permanent representative of President of Ukraine. For the Crimea, let's have a listen to the message that she's sending to the Tatar in Crimea. Uh, we always say if you have possibility to stay in Crimea, stay in Crimea. If you are um, in the age uh, when you could mobilize for Russian army, avoid it. And unfortunately, uh, flee Crimea, yes. But of course, uh, don't uh, go to Russian army. Don't fight against your own country and your own people. Different message from that message on the past uh, sent by Mustafa Jamilov before the falling invasion, 24th of uh, February. It was stay on Crimea, don't leave your land. Now the message since September 2022, the fourth mobilization on the army, in Russian army, the message is don't fight in Russian army, don't be mobilized. Because Ukrainian introduced today, Tatar introduced themselves today as a Ukrainian, a Tatar, a Muslim. Their land is a Crimea, but their motherland is Ukraine. Indeed. Lessons of history coming back. Raid, thank you very much indeed. You can see the report by Raid, uh, Abu Zadi and Agnes Guerra on our website, france24.com, and indeed repeated here on France 24 uh, throughout uh, the week. Stay with us for more news.